This was the first practice test I took, so she's not the cutest, but she was helpful with my learning, so we like her. We keep her around, and yes, we talk about her in third person. Um, hello, welcome or welcome back if you're coming from my previous video of how I approached the MCAT. My name is Sydney and in today's video, I'm going to go over how I reviewed my practice full lengths to increase my score from a 510 to a 517. And this is my specific breakdown of my score. I'm going to give a tour of my review Excel and break down one question from each MCAT section to show my review process. All of my previous MCAT videos, timestamps, as as well as my sample full-length review will be included in the description. With that being said, let's begin. So my previous video went into detail about how I approach each section of the MCAT. Before a little refresher, for the chemistry and physics section, my focus was to get comfortable with equations and practice problems. For cars, I read the passage, summarized the main idea with the author's point of view, and answered questions based on finding evidence from the passage. For biology and biochem, I memorized high-yield topics, learned how to read figures, and practiced a lot of problems. For psychology and sociology, I memorized reoccurring concepts, themes, and definitions, and I practiced a lot of passage-based questions for those one to two degree questions. For every practice test day, I simulate the real thing. After all, you do perform how you practice. This means I would have a night and morning routine that I'd follow to a T every time I would test. I would eat identical meals during breaks. I wore my same testing outfit that I wanted to make my lucky charm, and I was very strict with my timing of sections and breaks. On exam day, I took that 7.5 hour test followed by reviewing mistakes on my car section for one to two hours. The day after is when I would review the chem and phys section, the bio biochem section, and the psych and so section. I used my exam review Excel for immediate review, as well as adding the topics and main ideas I struggled with on this running dock of my weaknesses. In my third phase of my study plan, where I was only taking practice exams and targeted practice passages, I would also incorporate fill in the knowledge gap days at least once a week in my study schedule, where in using that dock of weaknesses, I would go over definitions to make sure that I memorized, as well as apply the concepts I struggled with in certain practice problems by finding similar practice problems to reinforce and practice that skill. Now I'm actually going to go over my practice exam review Excel. So here. Yes, this Excel will be in the description with a couple of questions for reference. But I'd look at your own discretion. I'd recommend trying to take this practice exam before watching this since it's a great free practice resource from Next Steps, which I found out recently changed their names to Blueprint MCAT. So on my Excel, I'd make a tab for each section. On each section, I'd have the following columns. Concept category, skill, question, answer, explanation, and an additional or how to improve column. Deep diving into each or the concept category. This is where I would go back to the content chapter or use Google. Google became my best friend. <laughs> for the skill column, I'd say filling this out was necessary for the beginning test to identify specifically where I struggled. If it was a careless mistake, was my focus messed with? Was this my environment that didn't make testing optimal or my routine was off? This here is just accountability to make sure that I would not be in the same mindset to make the same careless mistake. If it was a simple mistake, it was a straight up, I didn't know a concept. This would tell me that I needed to review this content and in order to solidify this was be able to speak it out loud or teach this concept to someone else. If I made a mistake due to problem solving, I would first identify what I needed to know and do as many practice problems as I could related to this type of problem. If the issue was timing, I knew from that moment on whenever I practiced to simulate testing conditions as often as I could. Practice passages, I'd make sure that I would time those. Cars was one of my biggest weaknesses. I would take mini practice tests every other day in the beginning of maybe like three passages in a row, four passages in a row, five passages in a row to build my endurance as well as make sure I was making time for answer and explanation key to have it in my own words. This is my process of filling out this section. Upon reviewing my exam for the ones that I got wrong, I first tried to answer that question again without looking at the correct answer. If I still got it incorrect, then I'd look at the exam's correct answer in order to try to get to that same answer through my reasoning. I would do so in using time to look through the passage again, opening content books, and using Google to foster my understanding. But if I'm still slumped and can't reason it out, this is when I would read the explanations 
questions provided by the exam. I would say this process is where the true learning kicks in and where having your score increases happens because you are solidifying the skills and concepts to answer this type of question in the future. So for this deeper level understanding, yes, it's important to know why the answer is correct, but it's also important to go through each incorrect answer to rule out why those are incorrect. Some will be obvious why they're incorrect, but for the ones that are very nuanced, this will differentiate whether you truly understand the question. Yes, it's super tedious, but it's important to be honest. Do you really understand this? To catch yourself going through the motions, I would employ the test to teach it to someone else. If you can't explain it, you don't understand it fully. This is where you seek help or put in the time needed in order to understand this concept. For the additional information column, this is where I've just inputted more background information needed for context or the main concept of this type of problem. By doing so, it helped me expand my web to deepen my learning. So here I suggest finding diagrams, looking up definitions, and going in on that concept just to make sure you understand also, sometimes I included how to improve. This was just a mental note how I can implement changes to not make that same mistake in the future. For the question review examples, I'll only be going through one question from each section in depth. I've left some other questions and their respective explanations that were either reoccurring topics or just additional examples on how I reviewed questions. I don't have access to the exam anymore and I don't want to show any bit of it since not mine. I'll try my best to walk you through it. Starting with chemistry and physics examples. Looks like this was a Snell's law question. The test categorizes as a knowledge and scientific concepts problem. So straight up that told me I did not know <laughs> this concept at all. This prompted me to write this concept on my Excel, all things Snell's law, reflection, refraction, all that jazz. It looks like the question probably prompted me to choose the statement that applied to the diagram given. I went through each answer choice to explain why the answer was correct and why the other choices were incorrect. On the improve or additional information column, I wrote myself a note as to why I got it wrong. Additional information, I followed up with the basics. What is index of refraction along with its associated Associated formulas. I also included the relationships between incident angles, mediums, and the normal angle. For definitions, I just made sure that I truly understood critical angle and total internal reflection. For cars, I had the same columns as the other sections, but I also added a main idea column, which was my way of practicing how to extrapolate the main idea from the passage. There were three types of questions that this practice test categorized. A comprehension, aka did you understand the passage? Was it within text? question. Can you find the statement to support an answer choice? And lastly, was it a beyond text question? Or did you understand the author's point of view or message to then be able to apply his or her thinking to an outside scenario? For this example, I answered the question incorrectly because my opinion or my bias overshadowed the author's tone. So from not interpreting the passage correctly at all, <laughs> I made a comprehension mistake, which is a bad boo-boo. <laughs> One habit that helped me focus Focus during cards review is saying out loud or in my head the author thinks blank so he or she states blank and this blank would be the main idea which then supports blank the answer because blank as for the biology and biochemistry example for this question i simply did not know these hormones and their regulatory functions cause and effect it's imperative to know the process from beginning to end to see how each hormone or each protein or each part of the mechanism plays into the outcome for bio biochem questions i would use google or content books to find the information i was missing and i would review and solidify topics by listing out steps to find hormones and their respective functions and relationships to other hormones. In order to ingrain this into my noggin, I would either speak it out loud, teach it to someone else, and if you are a fan of Anki, this is where you make it into a flashcard. For my additional information column, I just listed other hormones involved in this process. For the psychology and sociology example, I listed some common reoccurring MCAT concepts that were in exams, but for this example, I got this question wrong because I didn't commit the theories of emotion to memory. In addition, to 
understanding the correct answers definition, I wrote down the definition of each answer choice in theory of emotion. For additional information, I defined emotion to its bare concepts as well as reference a mnemonic for Paul Ekman's seven universal emotions, which I found to be extremely useful from the sheer amount of times it showed up on exams. Whatever system works for you, flashcards, transcribing, charts or diagrams, review well and review frequently. So that was everything I wanted to cover in today's video. If you found that helpful, please share with anyone else who's also taking the MCAT. Don't be discouraged if you're not seeing the scores immediately rise. As long as you're consistent with studying, focus on learning from your mistakes, actively practicing, and seeking external help early if needed, the results will come. If you have any questions or would like to connect with me, please leave a comment below or you can personally message me on my Instagram. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Wait.